in the earlier session on shoreline process, we tried to know about the depositional landforms produced by the action of sea waves. In this session, we will try to know about the erosional landforms. The type of coastal feature differs from place to place. The question which arises here is that why it differs? The variations in the shoreline features are due to the nature of the coast or the type of shoreline. So, what are the various types of shoreline? With this backdrop, the main objectives set forth are to know about the various erosional landforms produced by the sea waves, to understand in detail about the types of shorelines and their characteristics. Shoreline erosional landforms, factors influencing coastal erosion. The nature and intensity of coastal erosion are affected and determined by 1 wavelength, wave velocity, wave frequency and wave period. Long enduring waves with longer wavelengths and high velocity becomes more effective erosive agent. Secondly, structure and composition of the rocks of the coast determines the rate and intensity of erosion. Well jointed fractured rocks are more plucked, quarried and aberrated by the sea waves. The type of rock or the lithological characteristic determines the nature of erosion. Thirdly, stability of the coastline also influences the degree of erosion. Stable coastline is subjected to more erosion than the unstable coastline. Fourthly, rocky coastline or the vertical coast or the cliff coast having deep water is less eroded because the sea waves are reflected back without causing much harm to the cliff. On the other hand, cliff which rise moderately from the wide basal platform and if sea water is of shallow depth and more prone to hydraulic action and plucking because the breakers or the swash strike the cliff with great force. Fifthly, availability of the erosive tools like sand, gravel, pebbles etc. transported by the sea waves. Sixth is the duration of marine erosion. A variety of coastal features are formed due to marine erosion undertaken by the sea waves which includes 1 the notch and the sea cliff, 2 wave cut platform, 3 sea caves, 4 sea arch or marine arch, 5 blow holes, 6 geos, 7 stack and 8 coves. <laughs> Now let us see how notch and sea cliffs are formed. Notch is formed due to the erosion of coastal rocks or cliff through the me mechanism of hydraulic action and aberration by the breaker waves. This results in the formation of groove at the base of the coastal rocks or the cliff due to undercutting. There is a gradual extension of groove toward due to continuous wave attack. With the result, a notch is formed at the base of the sea cliff. A notch indicates the point of wave attack on the coastline. Sea cliff. Sea cliff is a distinctive feature of marine erosion along the rocky coast. The formation of sea cliff begins with the erosion of coastal rocks through the mechanism of hydraulic action and aberration by plunge and swash. This results in the formation of notch and the coast becomes vertical. Sea cliff is the steep rocky coast rising vertically above the sea water or the steep rock faces adjoining the coast. There is a gradual extension of notch landward 
due to continuous wave attack. With the result, the crest of the cliff overhangs on the notch. When the marine erosion is concentrated at the base of the cliff, results in the formation of steep vertical phase called as overhanging cliff. The rate at which sea cliffs erode depends on the type of rock, intensity of wave attack, presence of zones of weaknesses like faults and joints etc. Wave cut platform. Wave cut platform is more or less a flat surface in front of the sea cliff. The wave cut platform extends seaward from the base of the sea cliff and having a slope less than 5 degrees. Wave cut platform will be concave upwards. The origin and development of wave cut platform is related to cliff recession. Wave cut platform is also called as wave cut benches or aberration platform. Wave cut platforms are formed where cliff recession is active under the impact of erosion by the cliff base by uprushing breaker waves and effective removal of eroded materials by backwash or undertow currents. Extensive wave cut platform develops where the rocks are least resistant to wave erosion. Sea caves. Sea caves are formed along the coast due to gradual erosion of weak jointed rocks by the uprushing breaker waves. The joints are widened into large cavities and hollows which are further enlarged due to gradual wave erosion into well developed coastal caves. Sea caves are mostly formed in carbonate rocks like limestone and chalk because they are eroded more by solutional process. Sea caves are not permanent feature as they are often destroyed by uprushing high energy waves. Sea caves are also associated with headlands. A headland protruding into the sea becomes the center of wave attack on two sides of the headland. Sea arch or marine arch. Sea arches are generally associated with the headland. When the sea caves are formed on the either side of the seaward projecting headland, our sea caves are formed on the opposite side of the headland. A natural arch is formed due to joining of these sea caves. When these caves are enlarged to such an extent that the roof becomes very thin and give an appearance like an arch. Blowholes. Blowholes are associated with the sea cave with a zone of weaknesses like joints that are present on the roof of the sea caves. When the breaker wave attacks the roof of the sea caves along the joint planes, holes develop on the roof of the sea caves. Due to breaking of the sea waves on the roof of the sea cave, the compressed air in the cave tries to escape through these holes, making a whistling noise. Blowholes are also called as sprouting horn because of the noise produced when the water escapes through the holes. It is called as glaup in England. Geos. Geos are formed due to hydraulic action of sea waves along the joint planes associated with the roof of the sea caves. Due to wave action, part of the roof collapses and a long narrow inlet develops which is called as geo. 
when the roof of the sea cave becomes very thin and ultimately collapses and falls and the debris is removed by the powerful backwash and thus resultant long narrow inlets which are formed are called as geo in Scotland. Stack The isolated remnant of the headland in the form of a rock pillar projecting above the sea level is called as stack. It is also called as needles, columns, pillars and skerries and chimney rocks also. Stack is the part of the sea arch. Stacks are formed due to the prolonged action of sea waves due to which the roof of the marine arch becomes thin and collapses. As a consequence, the seaward part of the marine arch gets detached from the headland or the coast. The seaward portion of the headland will appear as a pillar is called as a stack. A stack is thus an isolated remnant of the headland projecting well above the sea level. The old man of Hoy, which is 137 meters high in the Orkney island of British Isles is a typical example of sea stack. When the stacks are consumed by the wave attack, a small portion of it is visible above the sea level is called as stump. Coves Sometimes coastal areas will be associated with the presence of alternate layers of hard and soft rocks. Due to the presence of rocks with varying resistance to erosion, hard and soft rocks are eroded at differential rates. The coastline thus develops indentations on a smaller scale. The soft rock which is eroded faster is worn back into the coves. Coves will be in the form of mini bays or bite. Classification of shorelines. Although distinction can be made between shoreline and coastline. Woolridge and Morgan in 1939 are of the opinion that it is impractical to separate coastline from the shoreline. Thus, it is implied here that the classification given will serve for both for the shoreline and coastline. The shorelines can be classified on various bases. One of the most important classifications of the shoreline is given by Johnson DW. Johnson's classification is based on two factors. One, the sea level changes, that is, if the sea level rises, the shores are submerged. If falls, the shore will emerge. Secondly, nature of the shoreline, that is, nature of shore before the emergence or submergence, that is, whether it was an upland or a lowland. Johnson has classified the shoreline as 1. The shoreline of emergence, 2. The shoreline of submergence, 3. Neutral shorelines and 4. Compound shorelines. Now, let us see what exactly is the shoreline of emergence. When the coast rises in comparison with the sea level or when the sea level falls as compared to the coast, shoreline of emergence are produced. It is mainly due to the formation of continental ice sheets. Huge amount of ocean water is consumed in the formation of continental ice sheets causing fall in the sea level. These shorelines can be divided into two subdivisions on the basis of the condition prior to the emergence as 1 emerge upland shoreline and 2 emerge lowland shoreline. (music) 
Now let us see what is Emerge Upland Shoreline. The main features of the Emerge Upland Coast or Shoreline is a raised beach or the cliff line now found above the present zone of the wave action. The coastline reveals the presence of notches, cliffs, caves, wave cut platforms covered with beach materials. Many parts of the world show the evidence of emerge upland coast. When the highland emerges, the cliff line also rises with it. Emerge lowland shoreline. Emerge lowland shorelines are formed by the rise of the continental platforms above the sea level. An emerge lowland coast has been produced by the uplift of the part of the neighboring continental shelf. The landward edge of such coastal plain in the southern USA is formed by the fall line where the rivers descends from the Appalachian mountains in a series of waterfalls. Offshore bars, saline flats, spits, sand dunes and sandy coast continue to form in the shallow water. Other examples of the emerged lowland coast are the northern shores of Gulf of Mexico and southern shores of Rio de la Plata in Argentina. Various shoreline landforms like bars, spit, lagoons, beaches are the typical features of the shoreline of emergence. The east coast of India, especially the southern part along the Tamil Nadu coast appears to be coastline of emergence. Shorelines of submergence. The shorelines of submergence are of two types, submerged upland shoreline and submerged lowland shoreline. Submerged upland shoreline is formed when the margin of an irregular upland along the coast is submerged. A more or less indented or a irregular coastline is produced. A highland having hills, ridges etc. submerges to form the coastline of submerged uplands. The course of the river valleys takes the form of marine inlets. Submerged upland shorelines are of mainly three types. One ria, two fjord or fjord and three Dalmatian. Ria shoreline. Ria is a Spanish term widely used to describe a submerged coastal river valley or estuary formed due to rise in the sea level. In case of the Ria coast, the hills and the river valley meet the coastline more or less at right angles. Rias have the form of funnel because as they approach land, they get narrower and shallower. This type of coast is found in the northwestern Spain, southwestern Ireland and western coast of Brittany in France. It is thus seen that Ria type of coastline is formed due to the submergence of the river valley. A Ria coastline is a typical Atlantic type of coast. Fijot shoreline. Drowned glaciated valleys are usually known as fijots. Fijot type of coastline is formed due to the submergence of the glaciated valleys. A fjord a Swedish word is characterized by long trough like base that cuts into mountainous coast. The wall of the fjord coast will be steep and straight. The fjords of Norway are more sloping than those of the Scotland. Fjords are common in Norway, Ireland, Greenland etc. Fjord types of coastlines are entirely confined to the higher latitudes of temperate region. 
which were once glaciated for example norway alaska south chile dalmatian coastline dalmatian is a term derived from the yugoslavian adriatic coastline in which the hills and the highlands run parallel to the coast the best example of such shores are found along the east coast of yugoslavia such a condition is found in the western coast of america in the pacific ocean the dalmatian coast tends to be straight and regular such a coast is also called as pacific type of coast such coast are also called as longitudinal coast submerged lowland shoreline when the lowland is submerged the sea spreads over a vast area because the lowlands has very gentle slope the river valleys turn into broad shallow estuaries when the tidal water recedes marshes and mud flats are seen everywhere this type of shoreline is characterized by offshore bars spits coastal lagoons and marshes such type of shoreline is found in northern ireland along the coast of boston in usa neutral shorelines these are the coast where there is no indication of either submergence or emergence new coastal lands are formed by the deposition of sediments deltas outwash plains coral coast belong to this category the great barrier reef of australia is a typical example of coral coast the word neutral implies that there is no relative change between the level of the sea and the coastal region compound shorelines compound shorelines develops in those areas where subsidence and emergence both activities go on together at the same places when the ice is melted at the end of the last ice age the sea level rose and the coast submerge and on account of melting the land masses become lighter and rose up in this way sea shores exhibit the effect of submergence as well as emergence such sea shores is known as compound shorelines the shorelines of norway and sweden belong to this type at some places coastline of india india has a very long coastline because of its peninsular location there are marked variation along the eastern and the western coastlines of india the east coast of india especially the coromandel coast along the southeastern part of tamil nadu appears to be coastline of emergence whereas konkan coast in maharashtra and goa along the west coast is the coastline of submergence the west coast of india is a rocky retreating coast erosional forms dominate in the western coast depositional landforms dominate the east coast of india conclusion the shoreline erosional landforms mostly depends on the structure of the rock characteristic of the waves and type of coastline a variety of shoreline erosional landforms are produced by the wave action which includes sea cliff sea caves wave cut platform sea arch stacks blow holes coves etc due to the coastal erosion the sea encroaches the land mostly due to the cliff recession 
The two main types of shorelines are shoreline of emergence and shoreline of submergence. The two types of shorelines includes neutral and compound shorelines. This typology of shoreline is mostly based on the changes in sea level. Rhea, Fijod and Dalmatian type of shorelines are typical of submerged upland coastlines. Neutral shorelines do not show any characteristic of either uh, submergence or emergence. Compound shorelines are typical of areas which undergoes subsidence and emergent activity simultaneously. In the next session, we will try to know more about the cycle of erosion as seen along the shoreline of submergence and emergence.